Hi, it's Wayne from howtofish.com.au. Today, I'm going to do a catch and cook, and it's going to be on carp. And there's a good reason for this, is the carp is a maligned species in our waterways. Everybody hates them because of the, what they do to the water quality, and that is true. But the fact is that I don't think we've invested enough time in working out how they can be used as a resource. And by that I mean, how can they be used as a source of food? So today I'm going to catch one, I'm going to cook it, and we're going to do a test on how good that is. I decided to fish at Eltham because I'd caught carp here before and fairly big ones. The other thing was that I believed that it was far enough upstream for the water to be clean and therefore the fish to be clean. So I managed to land a, a pretty decent carp and it was I knew it would be big enough obviously to cook. I wanted something that was going to give me a fair bit of flesh. That is a big fish. Wow. So I had my fish, <laughs> plenty of size to it and I knew that I'd get the fillets I needed out of it. And that's the great thing about the waterways. Have a look at the size of the carp you can catch in there. So that's a, a feast for a, a whole family. Once you've got your fish home, all you've got to do is scale it. And that is really easy to do with a fork. I don't have a dedicated scaling tool, but a fork will do just as well. And the good thing about the, the carp is it's got very large scales. So. You just basically go over the fish both sides, get rid of all of the scales on both sides of the body, and then you get ready to fillet it. Filleting is pretty easy. Best thing I've found is to use a, a sturdy knife, not a, a filleting knife. The filleting knife is a bit too flexible. A sturdy knife there allows you to cut through the, the fish because it's going to have some bones. Then cut from the base up towards the tail, you know, standard approach, and you can see from this, I'm no expert at this stuff, but all I did is cut to towards the tail as far as I wanted to go, then cut in size between the base and the dorsal fin, went back to the head, did the same thing, and that allowed me to get in from the top of the fish near the dorsal fin. Once I started at the top of the fish, all I did is ran the knife over the rib bones. So I wasn't cutting into them, I was feeling them and cutting the flesh away from them. You just keep doing this until you've got the fillet completely free of all bones and it comes off the body. And it doesn't take long to get the fillet off. If you've filleted fish before, you'd be pretty good at this. And if you caught a big carp, then you're going to get plenty of fillet off it. This next stage is really important. Putting milk, now it doesn't have to be lactose free, any standard milk is fine. Pouring that over the top of those fillets and letting it stand in the fridge overnight will get rid of all of the muddy flavour. This is what we all complain about, that muddy flavour. Well, this is the way to get rid of that. After leaving it in the fridge overnight with cling wrap on it, all you do is tip out the milk, wash the fillets thoroughly in clean water, and you're ready to go. Okay, this has got both a thick piece and a thin piece here. That thin piece is the belly flap, and that really doesn't have bones in it, but certainly this thick piece here does. So I'm gonna score this, and this really helps with the cooking need a really sharp knife. You want to cut through and you hear the bones crackle as you cut them. Hear that? So what it's doing is it's actually cutting all of the Y bones and you just continue until it's all done. And I'm making them very small. These are only a centimetre or even less. This is all of the meat now scored. It's pretty surprising the amount of fillet you actually get out of a carp. But it wasn't a large carp, I'll say that. But I've scored those, each one of those. The idea being that when I cook it now, this opens the fish up, allows the oil in. And what that does is softens the bones or make them quite chalky so that you can just eat them like you would any other piece of flesh.
I made a simple batter. Admittedly, it was a little bit stiff. I could have loosened it with water or maybe even milk. As well as a batter, I also made a rub, which was just a mix of flour, salt, pepper and garlic. And that was just to see what the fillets tasted like with that. Next, to do the cooking, I just used a fry pan with some vegetable oil in it, and then I put the fillets directly into that. I had the, the fry pan pretty hot, so the oil was boiling, and this is a deep frying process, and that's how you actually manage to soften those bones. I'm not sure of the temperature of the oil, so I can't give you instructions on that, but just don't make it too hot. Because I hadn't done this before, I was really sort of managing things on the fly so I turned uh, the fillets over when I thought they'd been in there long enough and I must admit they were starting to look pretty good or at least the batter looked good I was putting the fish in at different times to apply more or less cooking to them but I'm no expert on that and any of the people that have cooked fish before and put <laughs> cooked battered fish before were probably rolling their eyes right at the moment but the fact is I just wanted to make sure they were cooked through properly and it didn't take long to cook them all. What we've done now is I've got three pieces of fish here. I cooked quite a bit to get this right. Um, the one on the far left, on my left, has got just simply the dry additives on it. The next one has got the batter, has got a lightly um, textured batter on it and then this one on the far right has got a heavy batter I went a little bit too hard with this when I started so now it's time for the the taste test okay. All right, so the first one okay so the knife cuts through it pretty easily and it doesn't seem to have any problem with bones so as you know I basically did very very close cuts I incised it throughout the fillet just to see if I could break those up and from what I understand is that deep frying process will turn those bones into chalk. Well, we're going to find out because this is quite a thick piece. <laughs> that cough was just me getting my breath. That is, that is quite amazing. I took a, th a thick piece. You would have seen that the flesh that they cut, the fillets that they cut were very deep red, which usually means that the fish is stressed, doesn't make it taste good. To tell you the truth, I could not tell you what type of fish this is. In fact, I, because of the texture, I couldn't ever tell you if this was fish. But the one thing I'll tell you is that it is very palatable and I didn't have a problem with bones. So, so what I'm going to do now is, I'm just going to try a, another, another piece of this a thick piece so I know that there should be the Y bones in it and the rub that I put on it is uh, it gives you just any flavor it gives you a beautiful flavor very very simple rub uh, so that was a powdered one that was just salt pepper and garlic but um, the taste is really good That is amazing, no bone. So oh, I, couldn't, I couldn't detect the bone in that. It's, uh, the texture is pretty good actually, uh, but I'd have to say that I didn't get much fishy flavor out of that. So you could have convinced me that was a little piece of chicken. So the taste is good. I am very, very surprised at that. The only thing I'm finding with this and a couple of tests I did before was that the skin itself, if you don't get, I've left the skin on, I got rid of the scales, left the skin on, that can be a little bit rubbery. And I think it's just simply because of the way that I cooked. I didn't quite cook it through enough. But uh, I must say that is quite amazing. So as far as the test goes with the rub, this piece with the rub tasted pretty good. And I couldn't detect bones even on the thicker pieces of flesh. So just remember on a carp, the belly flap, which is that area directly over its stomach, doesn't have any bones in it. So if you cut that small piece out, you'll always get a thin piece of flesh, which is really good. The rest of the body has bones galore, and even if you fillet them like you would a normal fish, you will get those Y bones. And the Y bones are the things that everybody complains about. But if you cut this fish into, if you incise it into one centimeter pieces along the fish, it seems to break that up, and if you deep fry it, 
it can taste good, but it also is very, very palatable. Okay, so now this, this one here, this was lightly battered. Once again, amazing. I, I can't get over the fact that there's no muddy flavor whatsoever and a nice taste to it. And because it's just lightly battered, it's not too strong, uh, which is good because I know I've tasted a little bit of this last one. The last one we heavily battered <laughs> and all you can really taste is the batter. So I will just try this last battered one again. Very thick, as you can see, the batter breaks off. It's just far too thick. So uh, the hint there is you don't have to overdo the batter. And with this, Mm, wow. That's good, but all I'm really eating is better. But, um, very, very good. My opinion is that we should be using carp as a resource. This test for me was a real eye-opener. Uh, I think that with a little bit of practice, I could get this right. And like any other fish, all you're doing is you're scaling and filleting. You're not worrying about trying to get rid of all of those little bones. What you are doing then is cutting into the fish, cutting through those wire bones through that fillet, as I did earlier. Once you do that, the cooking process will take care of the rest. And you can flavor this any way you like, and it is a great resource. And if you're fishing in the river, especially in the higher, the higher and upper reaches of our rivers, these fish are clean. So you're not gonna to have to worry about pollutants and toxins that you'll get in the lower reaches. Let's do our part to get rid of them. If you prepare them properly, they can taste great. Now, out of that one single carp that I got, I mean, I've got, I've got, a, I've got food here for a full family, uh, and I've got two boys who eat a lot, uh, and I can present this almost as any type of meat that you like, and they wouldn't be able to tell the difference anyway. But I think if I told them chicken, they'd believe me. The great thing is that they're not gonna be worried about the bones, and there's gonna be plenty of meat there for us to enjoy. Well, I've had a great time putting this video together. I'm a little bit full too, to tell you the truth. If you've enjoyed the video, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe. And to get all of my videos that are coming out, please make sure that you push that subscribe button and look at my website, howtofish.com.au. You'll see all the products I have and other techniques on catching fish. See you next time.